Look at your phone. Have you ever wondered where it came from? Like someone made it, but how? Imagine for a second, your phone suddenly turned into a pitchfork. Your classroom turned into a farm. And just like that, you're wearing wool tunics and scratchy stockings. This could have been your life. But how did you get to be the one watching a video on a screen that has more complexity and technology than existed in all of Europe nearly 600 years ago? Your phone and the technology around you didn't just pop into existence. It took time for the science to develop the technology. So what got the ball rolling? A revolution. Not a revolution of countries or George Washington Schmolder or people singing in the streets. Do you hear the people sing? No, no, a revolution of ideas, of science. Today on TVH History, we're taking a deep look at the past to find out what a few religious scientists, some spinning planets, and a tyrannical church had to do with America and the phone in your hand. Hey, I'm Daniel. And I'm Lem. And this is TVH History. Imagine for a second that you want to create an app for your phone. An app that tells you what dogs and cats are thinking. She's trying to speak to me. I know it. You're excited. You start telling everyone, your teachers, your friends, your librarian, about your pet translation idea. You start watching videos on YouTube about how to make an app and check out books from the library about animal behavior. But then, as you're checking out the library, da -da -da, a librarian comes out of nowhere and hits you with an axe. <laughs> okay, it wasn't an actual axe, it was, it was a book. A book about axes. Hey, excuse me, man, you can't do that. I'm just trying to see if it's possible. No, it's not. It's not possible. But why? Stop! Living in America, this situation seems pretty ridiculous. But the freedoms we have in America are more of an exception and not the rule. People being stopped from pursuing new ideas and truth is something that's always been a struggle historically. It still happens in some ways today, but it happened a whole lot more 600 years ago before the scientific revolution. So where did it all begin? The story of the scientific revolution goes way back, all the way to ancient times. In the 300s BC, there lived a Greek philosopher named Aristotle. And Aristotle philosophized and wrote about like all the things, like, pretty much all the things. One of the things he wrote about was his belief that the Earth was actually at the center of the universe, and everything else revolved around it in perfect spherical orbits. By the Middle Ages, his views were adopted by the state church in Europe. Over the centuries, the dictator Karens, also known as the state church leaders, gained a lot of power and connections to governments throughout Europe. And although Christianity had been a powerful force for good, some people used the power of the church, which acted practically as a tyrannical government, to try to control what other people thought. These people wanted to punish those who disagreed with them, sometimes by imprisonment or even death. In 1543, a Polish churchman named Nicolaus Copernicus, who had spent years studying the night sky, published a book on the revolution of the celestial spheres. It flew in the face of what the world always believed and started a revolution, the scientific revolution. In the book, Copernicus claimed that the sun, not the earth, was the center of the solar system. Though his book was very important, it was still considered just a theory. More observations needed to be made to determine whether or not it was true. About a half century later, the Italian scientist Galileo would do just that, make observations. Wow. He was familiar with the work of Copernicus, but had a distinct advantage. He could actually look at the universe with a new invention, the telescope. He built a telescope and used it to observe the heavens. Also, he used his telescope to study the sun. <laughs> Don't stare at the sun. He actually discovered that the planet Jupiter had moons, moons that actually revolved around Jupiter itself and not around the Earth. And this seemed to confirm Copernicus's theory. But some powerful Karens in the state church learned about Galileo's theories and weren't happy. By questioning Aristotle, Galileo was questioning their own authority and interpretation of the Bible. So they put him on trial and kept him in house arrest. Around the same time, others in Northern Europe were doing the same thing as Galileo. German astronomer Johannes Kepler was also observing the universe and soon discovered that planets orbited the sun in elliptical, not perfect spheres, wow. further undermining Aristotle's theory. Sorry, Aristotle, it's just not looking so good for you. Meanwhile, English philosopher Francis Bacon was creating a system where people could analyze information they obtained by observation to make conclusions. And this system would actually become known as the scientific method. Now here's the thing, this method created a blueprint for science to flourish. If you have a theory or a hypothesis, then you test it by running it through the scientific method. Do people like vegan bacon more than regular bacon? Scientific method. Do cats try to actually communicate with people? Scientific method. Is Francis Bacon always constipated or always moody? Well, don't, don't scientific method that you, uh, you might not like what you find. Side note. What is science? It's a word that gets thrown around a lot, and people talk about it like it's a person. It's true, man. It's just what science says. But science doesn't actually say anything. It doesn't have a mouth or even a lab coat or a bow tie. There's technically two parts to it. 
The word science is actually an old French word that came to refer to collective knowledge by the Middle Ages. So the first part of the definition of science is what we collectively believe to be true. So just the body of knowledge. But the second part of actually doing science is how we figure out what is true in the physical world. By using Bacon's scientific method, we find things to add to the collective knowledge. So all science is, is just a general body of knowledge that is collected in a systematic way. Thanks to Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, and Bacon, the scientific revolution was in full swing. By 1687, one man would take all of this work and put it all together. And that man was Sir Isaac, probably never actually got hit in the head with an apple, Newton. Newton was born within a year after Galileo's death in 1643 and invented an entire mathematical branch known as calculus in his early 20s. Not sure who wants to do more math, but you know, you, you do you, man. In 1687, he published his masterpiece, Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy, which many historians consider the culmination of the scientific revolution. It contains his famous three laws of motion and law of universal gravitation. He helped everyone understand not just that the planets revolved around the sun, but that gravity was the reason ultimately behind it. And Newton built upon the work of people like Copernicus, Galileo, and Bacon, just as they had built upon the work of those before them, like Aristotle. He once wrote to a friend, If I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Also, don't stare at the sun. And even though their beliefs challenged what powerful people were saying, they didn't believe they were going against God's word. In fact, just the opposite. Their belief in a creator compelled them to explore creation. In his book, Principia, Newton wrote, This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. This being governs all things, not as the soul of the world, but as Lord over all. And there you have it, the scientific revolution in... Uh, whatever number of minutes I was. Now, here's the thing. We don't want to give the impression that Europe is the only place that science has flourished, because that just wouldn't be historically accurate. From Copernicus in Northern Europe to Guo Xiaojing in China to Albadani in the Middle East, no one person, continent, or country has had an absolute monopoly on scientific discovery. But there were two things that were unique about the scientific revolution in Europe. Number one, it was the first time that science presented a compelling challenge to institutional worldviews and authoritarian power. And number two, enormous progress was made in developing the scientific method, that thing that Bacon came up with, which was a system of processing information from experiments to add to the general body of scientific knowledge. Now, you may be wondering, what does this actually have to do with America? These principles were powerful influences on the American experiment. And the American government was set up to challenge the status quo and institutional thought to freely pursue truth wherever it led, as well as better government and better policy what Lincoln referred to as the unfinished work. Don't get it, because it's not finished. We gotta finish it. And over the course of a couple centuries, the scientific method was used by Americans to discover knowledge, apply science, and create technology, innovation that the rest of the world had failed to create in thousands of years. American people would go on to build the first airplane and split the atom and land on the moon. The United States became proof that when people were free to use the scientific method, they achieved things that few thought were possible. So how does this actually apply to me or to you? Let's think about this. What would your life look like without the scientific revolution? And why is it important to question what you're taught? Let us know in the comments below. Thank you for watching this episode of TBH History for PragerU. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with your friends if you found this helpful. If you watched this video all the way to the end, please put a bacon emoji in the comments below. We would like to see that. We would like to know who you are. There's bacon? Yeah, right should probably comment right now. I'm going to. I am so baffled that you would do this. Listen, Please I Please stop. I promise. I was just watching. It was just me writing down in my little, my little papyrus.